Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform the Kruskal Wallace H-Test and we're going to learn how to do this by hand. So before we start, as usual, let's take a look at our data. And the uh, Kruskal Wallace test is a, very, uh, it's a non parametric version of an ANOVA test. And in this case here, I'm looking to see if there's a difference between three samples. So I've got sample one data here, sample two data in the center, and sample three data here. I can use this test for four or more samples should I choose to do so. Uh, very often with a Kruskal Wallace test, we're dealing with um, ordinal data such as uh, ratings and so on. Or, as is the case here, we could be dealing with data that are not normally distributed. Uh, if they were, we would use an ANOVA test. So if they're not normally distributed, we'll use the Kruskal Wallace H test. And as it's a stats test, we need to, as always, set out our null and alternate hypothesis. Our null hypothesis in this case here is that the three probabilities distributions are the same. In other words, there's no difference between sample one, sample two, and sample three. And our alternate or research hypothesis is that the three probability distributions are not the same. Uh, in other words, at least two of them differ. And in this ex experiment here, um, our calculations, we're going to use a significance uh, level uh, and alpha, as an alpha value of 0 0.05. Now, our formula for calculating the H-test, or the H-statistic, looks a little bit awkward at first, but uh, when you read through it, it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward to work through. So our H-statistic is equal to, there, it's in three parts. This first part here is 12 divided by n times n plus 1. Now, n is the total number of values. So in my case here, I've got 6 plus 6 plus 6 values, which is 18. So n is going to be 18 in this version of the formula. The business bit of this formula is the bit in the center here. We need to sum up R, which is all the ranks, I for each numbers of groups. So I've got three groups, so we're going to do this three times. And we're going to divide that by the number in each group. Uh, and, and it happens to be six in all cases here. So I've got six in sample one, six in sample two, and six in sample three. So I'm going to be doing this three times and then adding up the three values for this bit in the middle. And then the final part here is we're going to subtract three times N, which again is 18 uh, plus one. So be, just be careful here when you're doing this to distinguish N, which is here, here and here. This is going to be 18 in my example. To distinguish that from ni, which is the number of values in each group or each sample. Now the good news about a Kruskal Wallace test is you, if the data that are here, you don't actually do anything with it at all. You're not going to calculate the mean or standard deviation or variance or range or anything like that. But we do need to rank these data from the smallest to the largest. So my first job here is I'm going to do this here is to write out from 1 to 18 the um, numbers uh, to represent the ranks of each of my data here. So you could do this in Excel um, or on paper like I'm doing it here. So I've got 18 values here. And I'm going to rank each of these numbers here so that they match up with, with a rank from the smallest to the largest. So I'm going to work through my data and see which value is the smallest. And uh, as it happens, the first value is the first value in sample one. So the first and lowest value for ranking number one is 8.2. So I'm going to write that here beside number one. My next lowest value, as I go through them all, I can see that it is um, 8.4. So I'm going to tick these off as I'm going along, 8.4. And then my next lowest value, as you can see, I have a 9.1. But I also have another 9.1 and a third 9.1. So tick those off. So I'm going to have rank number 3, 9.1, rank number 4, 9.1, and rank number 5, 9.1. That represents a tie, which we will come back to in a few moments. My sixth lowest mark uh, is a value of 9.6. Uh, next one then goes on to 10.2, uh, which is up here. And I'm just going to quickly fill on in all of these. You can work these out yourself for any sample data that you are doing. Uh, just making sure at all stages that you don't skip any values and watch out for ties. In my example here, uh, I do not have any more ties. 13.8, um, 13.9, and you know, tick these values off as you're going along. I'm just doing it very quickly here for illustration purposes. And the final and highest value of all is 17.4. So when you've done this, please make sure and recheck all the values that you've got the rankings correct because it's the rankings that you are going to use. Now, as I mentioned, we've got a ties here in this section here in the center. I've got three values of 9.1. Now, I can't use rankings of 3, 4, and 5. So what I do here is I just take the average or the mean of those three values. So 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 uh, is 12. So dividing those uh, by, by 3, 
I will get rankings of 4, 4, and 4 here. So I'm now ready to add these rankings to my table over here. And you notice that I've left some space at uh, either side of my columns of data here so that I can write in the ranking for each one. So now I'm going to put the rank here. Rank and rank. So 8.2, go down to my list here, see where's 8.2, and I can see that that ranks as number one. At 10.3, I'll have to look down to this and see where 10.3 is, that ranks as as number eight, so uh, take that one off there, 10.3, that's rank number eight. The next one is one of my ties, 9.4, so I can see they're all ranked as uh, four, so I'm gonna put, take, use one of the fours there. 12.6, if I go down through here, I can see that that's ranked at number 10, so write in 10 here. 11.4, go down through my list, there's 11.4, it's ranked as number nine. And finally, for the sample number one, the 13.2, uh, if I go down through here, I can see 13.2 is ranked as number 11. So I've got all the ranks for sample one, and then I go in and I do this for sample two. So sample two, very quickly, 10.2, go down through my list, I can see that that ranks as number seven. And 9.1 is another one of my ties, and again, I put in number four in here, crossing off one of the nines. And I'm just gonna quickly work down through all the rest as I've uh, got them all prepared here, 15. 4 and 17 and then go along and do the third sample which was a ranking of 12 and 2 6 13 18 and 16 and again uh, always recheck all your data to make sure that you have made the uh, right rankings uh, beside the right values now it's time to do some calculations and we need to sum up each of the rankings for each of the three samples Okay, so I'm going to call the sum here R1 for the sum of the ranks for number one. And when I add up these six values here, I get a value of 43. I'm going to sum up the values here for R2, and that's when I add all of those up, I get a value of 61. And finally, when I sum up the ranks for a sample three called R3, that's I get a value of 67. So that's the uh, first bit of the computing done. The next bit then is to put my values into my formula over here. So let's rewrite my formula out um, uh, here. So the H statistic is equal to 12, divided by N, which I've already determined is 18, the number of values, multiplied by 18 plus one. And then I'm going to um, uh, add to that, multiply that by the sum of each of my three sets here. So R1 squared is going to be 43 squared, divided by the number n in sample, the first sample, so that's going to be six. And then I'm going to add that, because I'm summing here, don't forget, to R2, which is uh, 61 squared. Divide that by six again, because I've got six values in sample two. Uh, and finally, add that then to the sum for rank three, which is 67 squared divided by six. And we multiply that by minus three times 18 plus one. Okay, so follow back through there if you're not sure where each of these values came from. And when I work all of that out, I get a result of 1.82. So my HSTAT is equal to 1.82. Before I can determine whether this is a significant uh, value or not, I need to determine the degrees of freedom. So I'm going to abbreviate that as degrees of freedom at DF. And it's a very simple calculation for a kruskal wallace test. As in a one-way ANOVA, it is the number of groups or number of samples minus one. So I've got three groups here. So three minus one is equal to two. So I've got two degrees of freedom. This allows me then to uh, take a look and uh, find the uh, critical value uh, for this. And the uh, kruskal wallace stat here follows a chi-squared distribution. So I'm going to use my chi-squared tables here and look across the degrees of freedom column here. So I've got two degrees of freedom uh, to look across that and I'm testing at an alpha value of 0 0.05. So my uh, uh, chi-squared uh, critical value in this instance here, it has a value of 5.991. So my chi-squared crit is equal to 5.991. I can see in this case here that my H stat is less than my chi-squared uh, critical value, therefore I, I cannot reject HO. So in this case here, I'm failing to reject the null hypothesis that the three probability distributions are the same. So in other words, I conclude um, that there is no difference in the distributions between sample one, sample two, and sample three in this particular instance here. Uh, I have not found a difference between my groups. 
So that's how you conduct a Kruskal-Wallis H-test uh, by hand. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.